What's up guys, it's Simon. Um, like I mentioned in the last video, this one's going to be about oil magic. Uh oh, where did I put my book? There we go. Um, this is my <laughs> very first book of mirrors. Um, if you don't know what a book of mirror is, I'm pretty sure I did a post on my Facebook page. But basically, a book of mirrors is kind of like where you do your journaling of your experience through the craft um it's also where you can take notes of stuff you learn um you can take notes of the seasons you can you know if you learn something online or on youtube or through a book or something you can take notes if you have like intuitive learning I got messaged by someone, so I was reading that real quick. Um, I'll, I'll message her back after this. <clears throat> but, um, like I was saying, if you get intuitive knowledge, you can, whoops, you can, um, write that in there, too. So it's kind of like that. It's kind of like the witch's notebook slash journal slash diary. <laughs> Excuse me. Why am I always burping now? This is the second video that I'm burping in. But, um, yeah, so that's my very, very first one that I started. Uh, July, Wednesday, July 15th, 2015. It was the dark moon that day. That's cool. That's the first thing I wrote in this book. But anyway, I'm gonna... Uh, I wanted to make sure that I told you, uh, you know, all the properties of the oil magic properly. So I got my little notebook. I should have had this for the dirt magic because there were some things I forgot to mention. But I, I said the gist of it and the rest of it you can kind of figure out on your own. So I'm not too worried about it. But uh, yeah, I'm going to get started in the video. going to get comfortable so that way I can... Um, start okay so I'm gonna try and do it from least used oil to most used oil um okay so which one with that the uh, first one would be okay before I actually start I'm using <laughs> a, a different bottle because I don't uh, there are two yeah, there are two oils that I don't have on hand because I finished up the bottles and I already threw them away. So I'm using this canola oil bottle to basically represent those two bottles of oil. Okay, so you're going to see the same thing twice. So the first one I'm going to talk about is mineral oil. This is the mineral oil, okay? And, uh... I only use that for crystals, minerals, stones, and resins. So when I want to make an oil using one of those things, so for example, um, an amethyst oil, I'd use a piece or amethyst chips in a bottle with, what was it called? Mineral oil. I almost said coconut oil, but no, mineral oil. And then uh, why would you do that you're probably asking why would you make a crystal oil or such stone um stone oil well basically that what you can use um if you don't have a lot of money to buy crystals so let's say you only have two amethyst and you're doing oh a psychic protection spell with a candle and you put the two amethyst around there so that way you have it um, but then you're also having problems sleeping at night, or you want lucid dreams at night. Yeah, you could use another crystal, but let's say you don't have any other crystals that work for that, okay? So now you can't use your amethyst, because you're using both of them for the candle, okay? And, you know, yeah, it's possible that you could only use one crystal, but let's face it, most people do like little crystal grids around their jars or around their candles but you could completely eliminate that by you know 
uh, depending on how big the crystal is, breaking it and making smaller pieces that you could also lay around, or put one of those pieces or get a small chips or something and put them about and make a crystal oil and anoint your candle and then you have both of those crystals to work with. Um, same thing with mojo bags. Instead of putting an amethyst in there, if you only have those two, and just anoint it with the amethyst oil, you know, and you can do that weekly or something. Um, if you don't have money for crystals at all, um, usually it's kind of easy to get a lot of stones, but there are some that are difficult to find, like uh, green stones, those are hard to find, uh, purple stones, um, blue stones are a little tricky. So you could make oils of those and use it for like color magic or something. Okay? And then, you know, same thing with the resins. Use the properties of resin. That's That would be really great, actually, um, for Dragon's Blood resin. Since it's very... It can be kind of expensive. It's also, I believe, the trees that make it are, like, running out. Like, they're being depleted. And they're becoming extinct or something. So that's another reason why it's getting expensive. So if you make it an oil, it will last longer. And then you'll be able to, um use it as much as you want. So, the next oil I'm going to talk about is... Hmm... I guess corn oil. Yeah. Hmm. And I actually have the bottle of that one. So, I think this is actually the second bottle I bought, because the first one... I think the first one had a different image. I don't remember. But next one is, ooh, you can't read that, corn oil. Um, corn oil, if you don't know, corn's good for, like, fertility, prosperity, abundance, uh, wealth, um, feasts, you know, health, stuff like that. So I use it for, like, prosperity, fertility, and abundance. Um, so, and I really only have two oils. I have, where's that other one? I got my Trink of Five... Um, oil, which is kind of like a call money, keep money oil. And then I have... Oh, those are not the oils. Where are they? Oh, there they are. I... Oh, you can't see it. But I got um, another one over there. That's my prosperity oil. And, yeah, that's pretty much it with the corn oil. I mean, you could also use it if you wanted to make an oil to help someone get Oh, wait, that's not the oil. Um, it helps someone get fertile, especially if you're having some fertility issues, you're trying to get pregnant. Excuse me. You could, uh, you could either make it to anoint on the belly of the woman and or the penis of the man. You could also anoint the, veg vina uh, the, the, the vagina. <laughs> or, um, if your partner's not comfortable with that, you can take a cowrie shell and anoint that make it symbolic of the womb and the vagina and you know obviously tether it to your girlfriend fiance wife what have you mother whatever um so you'd want to use a tag lock which is basically something that represents the person which would be like nail clippings their hair um uh you know if they have like they like cut off calluses or something like that. Get, collect the calluses. Um, what else? Hmm. Um, baby teeth is another tag lock, but that wouldn't really apply in this case because you can't get a baby pregnant. But, you know what I mean, like body fluids and um, menstrual blood, uh, urine, semen, um, yeah, blood period, saliva. Um, so yeah, you could do that with your corn oil, or you can make your own money and prosperity oil, what have you. Uh, the next one I'm going to talk about is vegetable oil. Now, that's the other one that I don't have, so we're going to pretend that this is now vegetable oil. Okay, vegetable oil is what I use, where'd it go? Oh, to make my herbal oils or animal oils. And herbal oils, mm, what's the best way to explain? They're basically kind of like the 
uh, traditional or old-fashioned essential oils um, so that's kind of like similar to the crystal oils I was talking about or stone oils um, what you do is you would take a mortar and pestle or the back of a spoon and a bowl crush up your herb for example lavender and ouch I just bit my lip um, and then you would you'd crush it up to release the nutrients not the nutrients the um the aroma and all the essence, we'll just call it that, and then you'd put it in like some little jar or something, and f you'd um, you do one quarter cup or one third cup of herb to one tablespoon of uh, vegetable oil, and you know just use that ratio, make as much as you want, and then you got your own little essential oil so to speak. It's obviously not real essential oil, it's technically an infusion oil, but um, it'll still get the job done. Uh, you could also leave the herbs in there if you so desired, and um, just let it forever steep. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, it's. I think you have to do it for six weeks before you decide to strain it. But like I said, you could just leave it in there. With it being an oil, you don't have to worry about them going rancid as quickly as it would water. So, oh, and the animal oils. That is basically, you know, you could make um, totem animal oils. Or you could make, like, spider and crow. If you had, like, bones or little insect bodies or whatever. Whatever snake skin, you can make your own snake oil. Stuff like that. Um, you, you can also take it a step further and not only have it be an honorary totem animal oil, but also um, work with the properties of the animal. Like I have a spider oil that's basically like a generic um, manifestation or conjuring oil. You know, because that's what the spider is very good at. Um, it also can work with do, um, authority. Uh, what else? Those are the main two. I'm sure there are more I can't think of offhand. I don't want to waste time on this video because it's, um, it's already so long. But, um, okay. Next one is olive oil. Olive oil! Okay, so olive oil is, um, basically it's I'm sure you know this, but it's the traditional oil. You know, a lot of witches will use it as the all-purpose oil. They'll just use it for every oil that they make. Um, what I use it for is, what did I say? Basic candle and or magic oils. So that would mean um, an oil that isn't meant to be like a crystal oil not meant to be an herb oil, or an animal oil, or some type of, um, like prosperity or money, or also one that's not meant for protection or love, or like an honorary potent, an honorary potent oil. Um, examples of that would be like a deity oil, if you made that. So it doesn't leave you with a lot of options, but, um, some examples of oils that I've made with olive oil are um, my flying ointment, I mean flying oil, uh, uh, ancestor summoning oil that I'm going to be making at some point, um, my, what's that called, mental clarity oil, my earthing oil, which is um, basically a grounding oil, so things like that, or if you want to make a an all-purpose candle anointing oil that would also be a good idea to use the olive oil for at least that's what I would do um, if you want to make a witch's brew oil you know um, and when I'm talking about witch's brew I'm talking about the sage thyme lavender rosemary basil I think that's it I think it's those five I'm pretty sure yeah, because I think it was supposed to be like five herbs for like the five points of the star pentagram and all that. But, um, yeah, so that's what that is. Um, I think my vanquishing oil is made with olive oil, too. 
pretty sure. Yeah, in my vanquishing oil. Oh, you probably don't know what that is. Um, my vanquishing oil is basically an antidepressant oil. That's what it does. It vanquishes negativity, so you can stay on a higher frequency. Um, the next one I want to talk about is my coconut oil. Coconut oil. Yes. Not the tub of coconut oil. This is, um, has hair on it, actually. Why does everything have so much fucking hair on it? This is actually the, called cooking coconut oil. Um, I'm not a crack baby, I promise. Um, Cooking coconut oil is the same thing as fractionated coconut oil. What they have done is they've... Does it say on here? No. But they've removed, like, some... Some compound... Oh, does it say it back here? Hmm. It doesn't. Well, they've removed one of the compounds that makes it solid um like in the organic and the regular coconut oil so if you're buying from the now brand i think it's called fractionated coconut oil but walmart has the cooking coconut oil in the um in with the oil section it's actually with um the coconut oil and i use that for this is actually one out of the two oils that I use, um, magical properties that you can find though, with the corn oil. It's obviously like prosperity and, and um, fertility and abundance. Um, I'm itchy because I need to trim this and I keep forgetting to do it. Don't ask how. I know it's on my face. I shouldn't be forgetting that much, but I am. With the coconut, um, it's only if you research it in what I feel. It's um, connected to love and protection. I realized I haven't been looking at the lens the whole entire time. Oh well. <clears throat> so that's pretty much all I use that for. Um, not foil. That oil for. I can't talk today. Um, yeah, so my protection oil and my... Well, it was called Eros oil. Not Eros. Eros. Yeah, Eros oil. Eros is a wind god. But, um, that's neither here nor there. But now it's called Amore Oleum, which is Latin for love oil. So, yeah, and actually, can I reach it? I can reach it. Oh, no, I can't. Never mind. Yeah, I, th I thought I could reach it, but I can't. Oh, well. And, is that it? No. The grapeseed oil. Right. Okay. Now, whoops. This bottle's actually empty, so it's like falling all over the place. Grapeseed oil. I know you can't read it. I love Pompeian grapeseed oil. I don't know why, but I, I guess it's the consistency. Um, who else had a good grapeseed oil? Oh, no. I didn't like it, actually. Never mind. Um, the grapeseed oil um, is what I use for honorary oils and potent oils for example my power oil which was the first oil that i made it was so awesome it was so much fun making it too and it's also the first oil that i've used up to excuse me <clears throat> oh dear um it's also the first oil that i used up and had to refill so that was pretty awesome um my uh Dog do, da, 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 my dog da and Danu oils, and those are my um, not my matron and patron, but they're the primordial mother and father. Instead of saying God and goddess or mother and father, I use those two names. I don't necessarily work with dog da and Danu the way that you read about them. It's kind of more like the generic primordial mother and father, with a little bit touching on their stories and stuff. Um, what else? Uh, uh, you wouldn't know what that oil was. Um, oh, I could have sworn I made more with it. I don't remember. Oh, my elemental oils were gonna be, oops, we're gonna be made in it, but was that it? Huh, I don't remember. Uh oh. 
Uh oh, I knocked over my fire representation. Oh no. I think my meditation oil has um grapeseed oil in it. I don't remember. I don't remember my recipes offhand. I have to use it. I think my warrior oil has it too. You need to see it. It's awesome looking. Hold on. Let me get to the light. <clears throat> look. Look. Oh, you can't see it. Oh, that's because it's on me. Duh. Huh. Ta-da. Look at that. I hope you saw it. I'll have to check to see if it showed up on there. If not, if you didn't see it, I'll make another little clip and I'll show it at the end. But, um, yeah, that's from the, whatchamacallit, oh, what's that shit called? Um, the red stuff. Yeah, that's very descriptive. Uh, oh, oh, the, um, oh, shit, I just forgot again. Red chili pepper, there we go. Yeah, it turned it all red. That was really cool. Um, is that it? Yeah. That's it. Oh, I know, but I can't show you that oil. That, that oil is way too sacred and private, so you can't, I, I hope I didn't show it by mistake. But, um, yeah. So that's, I know this video was all over the place, you know, between me moving and shaking and, um, forgetting my train of thought and stuff like that, but, um, I hope it taught you some stuff, maybe it inspired you to, like, figure out how to use oils in your own practice, and, um, it definitely helps you save money and, um, really get close and personal with your practice, so I really suggest you do it. Blessed be my dear witchlings.